And before we start, just a quick public service announcement. If there's an emergency, please note the exits on either side of the chambers. Bathrooms are located out, to the door, out the door to my left, women's room to the right, men's room to the left. We allow 30 minutes for public speaking. If you have not done so already, please sign up at the podium. This meeting is now called to order at 7.32 p.m. on March 3, 2020. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you, you may be seated. May I please have roll call? Alderman Ventura Morrell? Here. Alderman Coop? Here. Alderman Scott Childress? Here. Alderman Worthington? Here. Alderman Tollerman? Here. Alderman Davis? Here. Alderman O'Reilly? Here. Alderman Shabbat? Here. Alderman Hirsch? Here. We have a quorum. Can I have a motion to dispense with the minutes of the previous meeting and approve same? Motion. So moved. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is adopted 9-0. Can I have a motion to dispense with the reading of the general bills? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion is adopted 9-0. Before we enter into public speaking, I'd like to ask Alderman Scott Childress and Alderman Shabbat to join me at the podium to present the Common Council Community Award. As council members, we get the chance to meet folks from throughout the city and from all walks of life. Throughout our service on the council, we meet community members who truly move us by their acts of kindness and their efforts to better our community. Tonight, we carry on this new tradition of the Common Council where we will highlight and honor a community member who has gone above and beyond to serve others. Tonight, it is our great privilege to honor Ron Woods. I would like to invite you up here, sir, and turn over the presentation to Alderman Scott Childress. <laughs> well, welcome everyone tonight. Uh, as you may know, uh, we're going to honor Ron Woods for his many, many years of service. These years go pretty far back. Um, we know that uh, he's interested in politics. Uh, as a matter of fact, he uh, was giving Joe Biden a place to hang out when Joe wasn't looking so good in the polls uh, so he could hang out. And I know this is a true story because Ron told it to me himself. Uh, Ron, though, his great uh, contribution to Kingston, his great love, has been working with youth of the city, young people, so they can have places to play and things to do in the summertime when they're out of school. He got started with this, I think it was 1777. The, uh, um, the Kingstonians challenged the British to a foot race to Hurley, and he bought the shoes for the Kingston militia. Uh, they won, they got to Hurley first, and the British were so angry that apparently they burned the city down. After that, Ron took some time, rethought, and he began to dedicate himself to the city's parks and to the city's youth. He's given uh, untold uh, amounts of money for himself, his time, and his energy, and most of all, his character. And it's that character that we really are honoring tonight. He is the model of a giving person. He has been doing so much for the community and has never asked for anything in return. The return for him is the smiles, the handshakes, the thanks that he gets from young kids, knowing that he has done so much for them in this town. And he's done it for kids for generations, and it's for that reason that we are honoring him tonight. Uh, to give you a more personal take on Ron's contributions, Steve Shabbat. 
Well, I have to say this is, this is a real pleasure to be able to say something. Um, we usually go out for breakfast, and Ron doesn't give me a chance to say two words. So this is nice. I can, I can have my say. Um, but I go back quite a few years with Ron. We've been very involved with the rec department, Ron more so than me. He started before, before me. Ron and I grew up in the same neighborhood. So we always have tons of stuff to talk about. Um, Ron's contributions to this department, is, you can't even start to mention everything he has done. It's a daily, it's a daily joy, I, I was going to say task, but it's not even a task for Ron. It's a joy, he loves being involved with the rec department. And before I forget, congratulations, Ron's Biddy League team won the championship this weekend. Of course, I should say Ron sponsors all of them, I think. So the odds were pretty good he was going to win something. Um, but anyway, we don't usually get too mushy or anything like that. Um, but I, I do have to say, you know, it's been a pleasure working with Ron. Um, I learned a lot about the, the programs here from him. Um, getting involved when I first started here, I didn't really get involved in a lot of things. And Ron kind of, he pulls you in and gets you involved in things, you know. Next thing you know, you're, you're building parks, you're, you're fundraising with them. And, you know, it, it turns out it, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's very rewarding. But anyway, he's become one of my best friends now. I've, I've known him for a lot of years. And we don't want to get too mushy, right, Ron? So anyway, I just, I thank Ron from the bottom of my heart for everything he has done for this city, for the people of the city, and mostly the young people in this city. He's, he's, a, he's somebody we can admire, and we can all learn something from what he's done. Thank you. Thank Steve. you, sir. So we have here for you a beautiful certificate of our appreciation. So thank, thank you so you. much. I'm going to try to say a few words. I'm not sure whether I can or not. But I thank the Kingston Common Council for this award. Thank you, Andrea and the uh, Kingston Common Council, all of the older persons. And thank you, Rennie. Rennie's my alderman. And Steve Shabbat, he's my old alderman, my old ward. He's very old, Steve. And uh, thank you, Kingston Common Council, for the award. And Thank you, everyone, for coming. I want to thank Kevin Gilfeather. Kevin and I worked together over 20 years. He put up with me over 20 years, Kevin. And he's retiring, and uh, we had a great time. I think we had a few achievements. I want to thank the Kingston Recreation Commission. It's the best commission I think we've ever had. It's a great commission led by Al Nace. Uh, Travis Rask is here, a dynamic young commissioner. I want to thank uh, Nancy Mills, who uh, is very kind to the children. Ellen Tremper Vendetti, thank you, Ellen, for being so good. Joe McDowell has devoted his life to the children. And who did I miss, Kevin? Maureen here. Maureen is not here. She's actually, it's a great commission. We have a nice staff. The maintenance guys are great. They put up with me. Uh, Steve Freer is here and his staff. During the day, I ride around to the parks. I'm really tough on all the staff, as you know. I holler at them and everything. But I ask Steve Freer and the guys to do something. They do it right away. If there's a chain off the swings, I ask them, they go right over and do it. No excuses, no wait until next week. They go out and do it. Thank you, Steve and the staff, very, very much. Uh, the commissioners and Kevin has an excellent staff in the office. Uh, I want to thank a couple of good friends of mine, Patty Jordan and Brad Jordan, who hates publicity, I know, but he does so much for the recreation department, Brad does, for the handicapped, for the kids, for the senior citizens, and for everyone. I don't know why we don't build his Kingstonian. Let's all go up tomorrow morning, we'll meet at 7 o'clock and start building, the, <laughs> building his Kingstonian. Okay, thank you everyone for coming, all my friends, thank you. Thank you. This way.
Thanks for dressing up. We're now entering into the public speaking portion of the meeting. The council has set aside a 30-minute allotment for this purpose. Please state your name and address for the record and direct comments to the chair as council members cannot engage in debate. First speaker, please. James Richter. Hey, I wore this shirt so you can't forget who I am now and I'll wear it every time I come here. I don't know how to react to to this one um, resolution of 52 that only took, what, since August. So I'm going to thank whoever did it. I'm sure somebody took the time to do it. It just took so many months of me complaining. Also, I, I want to know, um, kind of like, who's in charge of getting these LED lights on? Do you know who it is? Because on my street, and I've walked a few streets in Midtown in my neighborhood of Van Buren Street. Most of these LED lights that are going on are kind of dim. But a house, two houses up from me, from Delmont Street to Prospect Street, they could shut off the dim lights because the one is so, hot, so bright that that's ridiculous. When one's bright and the others are dim and they all got replaced the same day, Somebody is a little, turned up the wattage a little bit on that one light in front of, um, it's 52, Van Buren Street. Maybe somebody needs to talk to the contractor who did it and turn that a little bit down a little bit or turn them all up. Make every street bright. I mean, this, I don't know how the neighbors are tolerating sleeping with this light. It's a, it lights up the whole block. The others don't. None of the other lights on our street are light with that bright that's let's turn them all up then so we have all looking like daylight one light somebody screwed up and somebody needs to contact a contractor and tell them go over to 52 van buren street and turn it down if all the others are going to be dull turn down the one that's the brightest at night it is so high all right i really don't want to go any further in this this month. I don't think you guys can handle me more tonight. So, thank you for whoever, whoever did finally remove these handicapped. They've been they should have been gone two years ago when the people died. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Ellen DeFalco. Ellen DeFalco, 66 Glen Street, Kingston. Council President, Alderman, members of the press and public. 
First, Madam President, good luck in your in new position. Council members, good luck um, in this new term. There are serious issues to deliberate, and while I can't address them all this evening, I will, I promise, in the future. I stood before you in August last year when our Civil Service Commission amended the specs for safety officer to safety coordinator. The individual at the time who was seeking civil service protection is the one and same person of interest being considered for a provisional appointment to deputy superintendent for environmental services, which now is a newly created position. I stated then, and I do now, that this is job racketeering, nepotism, cronyism, and a breach of your very own ethics law and management personnel policy. While you may discount this as dead, according to Majority Leader Scott Childress, and our local media outlets tagging the accompanying stories, Mayor Drop's wife from reorganizational plan, and the mayor shelves the proposal to create job that could have gone to his wife, you can be assured that after you have evaluated the impact of the DPW and Parks and Rec merger, per the mayor's correspondence, the proposal will be back on the table for further discussion and consideration. It was also stated in the same communication that the Parks Maintenance Division in DPW was never funded or staffed. I find that quite suspect because it's now noted under number eight in the DPW annual report on page four. So is this fact or is this fiction? Why weren't the communities in the state identified that have merged or combined their DPW and Parks Departments and have the Deputy Superintendents of Environmental Services? Why wasn't that information shared to formulate an intelligent decision? I believe the figures and justifications for merging these departments are fabricated. Further, I believe it is your responsibility and duty as aldermen to protect the interests of the taxpayers of the city. And if it means micromanaging, yeah, the administration and key, and key departments, then so be it. So to the mayor, you can't always get what you want. Now regarding the appointment to the Board of Assessment Review, the provisions of Chapter 49 in Ethics pursuant to the provisions of Section 806 of the General Municipal Law, the City Council of the City of Kingston recognizes there are standards of ethical con conduct for public officers and employees which must be observed if a high degree of moral conduct is to be expected and if public confidence is to be maintained by our city government. Now, General Municipal Law, Section 806, states that ethical standards should be defined when employment and activities are in conflict with the official duties of local government officers and creates an appearance of impropriety or conflict. Now, with that said, the person that is being considered to this board, the resolution it should be withdrawn. Under New York Con Consolidates Law, Real Property Tax Law, Section 523, the Board of Assessment Review shall consist of not less than three, nor more than five members appointed by the legislative body of the local government, which is all of you. Members should have a knowledge of property values in the local government, and a more majority of such board shall consist of members who are not officers or employees of the local government. So in this case, you have a deputy fire chief 
you have a water department employee who already serve on the board. Even though this employee is not an employee of our local government, she's related to an alderman and her appointment creates an appearance of impropriety or conflict. So I get it. May 1st is fast approaching for the tentative roles to be filed. The fourth Tuesday is grievance day and there are numerous vacancies on the boards, commissions, and committees which have not been filled for months. But please, put an ad in the newspaper if you have to. Don't appoint from within to fill the unexpired term. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Mark Richter. I'd like to thank the council for their consideration on reducing the taxi uh, driver. I would like to thank the council on their consideration on reducing the taxi license fees for the drivers. And um, I also would like to advocate for our local public access station to see if we can figure out a way um, they get a lot of important stuff on there. I actually am communicating with them and we actually have the bus meeting of the fare changing, the scare, schedule changing, actually going to be playing on public access to inform the public. There's a lot of senior citizens that don't get the whole online concept. And, um, and I also like to thank Kingston Radio because they're doing a great job with, with government as far as informing the public. Um, it's, it's one of my, uh, since I started public access, it's, it seems like I, I, I can't put the camera down. I just keep on going. Um, I, like, I like doing this. I like informing the public. So thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Stephanie Allensug. I don't think I've said it right. I, I can't read it. <laughs> um, Stephanie Linsig, I live at 56 Van Dusen Street. Uh, the Common Council via the Laws and Rules Committee has in its sights a comprehensive piece of legislation that will memorialize necessary and common sense policies to guide our Kingston Police Commission. Since March 2018, Rise Up Kingston has been working with members of our directly impacted community, many of whom have been victims of police misconduct and subject to the malpractice within the criminal justice system at large, to craft our legislation, which has been received with full support from the New York Civil Liberties Union. This legislation was modeled on the groundbreaking work done in the city of Rochester and also incorporates many other well-researched legislative and legal precedents but you already know all of this. What I want you all to consider is something that many of you have the privilege to not consider on a daily basis, and that is the threat of violence. Our under-resourced black and brown community members must live with the daily threat of violence. Walking out their doors every day means risking their livelihoods and lives for a muffler that's too loud, for appearing suspicious, for simply being black in the city of Kingston. What we are asking for is simple, yet apparently it is also so bold. We are asking for the city of Kingston, for the Common Council, for the mayor, to memorialize guidelines, institute trainings, and create greater transparency and accessibility within the complaint process for our Citizen Kingston Police Commission and its commissioners. We are asking that you do this in collaboration with the people in Kingston who are both directly impacted by police misconduct and who have been working on community-based solutions to the scourge of mass incarceration and state repression. We are asking for your leadership. I would also like to uplift the community members who have supported and participated in this work. If anyone in this room supports greater police accountability, could you please raise your hand? As a woman of color, a first-generation citizen, a person who has experienced violence, as a staff member of Rise Up Kingston, a citizen of Ward 4, and a near lifelong resident of the Hudson Valley, I am asking that you consider this and you pass our police accountability legislation in full. Thank you.
Thank you. Next speaker, please. Patrick De Leon. Citizen Action and members of the Fourth Ward would like to express our solidarity with Rise Up Kingston about the need for police accountability reform legislation. I'd also like to thank Alderwoman Rita Worthington for her support. The issues of police accountability, fair and affordable housing, and fully funding schools are all connected. We call on the Common Council to recognize the need to invest in our community today to reap the benefits of a fair and equitable society in the future. Right now, Ulster County Justice Reform Task Force is forming subcommittees to focus on both youth and restorative justice with representation from agencies, stakeholders, and the community. Kingston should not let itself be left behind when this is so clearly the will of the people. Every delay only results in more over-policing, more over-policing only results in more money, time, and lives being siphoned away from the communities which have built up Kingston into the great place that it is today. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Philip Guerreri. Philip Guerreri, 28 Deets Court, Kingston. I was booted up front and to the front lines by the man who shut down our public TV live programming that's still in its coffin. And to the lady before, POTUS set the example don't come over here lambasting condemnations. Now, I didn't stand for the pledge to the corporation. 1789, the Electro College military coup of our USA government flying the pirate's flag of General George Washington into a military republic that on September 11th, 1941, in Masonic Knights Templar, had the groundbreaking for the Masonic Temple shadow government of the Pentagon, where all our debt is. That's not USA debt. And as to the DNC, it should be the Democratic Democracy Party and not the Democratic GOP Party. Uh, you want a monument to the war on terrorism? What was Adolf Hitler doing? On behalf of who? whose Mission Impossible MIA accomplished was September 11th, 1941. Making sure the global corporations were taking over that government. You want to do something about the crime and the militarism of the police department, military police department? We have no regulations when combat soldiers come to Kingston. They're to protect corporatism. That's what they were trained from fetus soldier orphans and beaten to a pulp until they understand what authority is about. You want to do something about all the delinquency? Declare this county green. Start serving organic foods in the prisons, in the public school system. Get rid of the yawns. Oh, what are you talking about? Organic foods. 
They're a waste of money. God gave us Monsanto to declare us healthy. You get to join the diabetes club. You get to join the local mortuary. Like the Kingstonian. You want to build it? Mandate that it's built and designed green. Or no one's exhausted from lifting our coffin sheets in morning's wake to another funeralized day. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next speaker, please. Joseph DeFalco. Thank you, Council President Joseph DeFalco, on 66 Glen Street. Uh, there's a lot of ground to cover tonight. I'm not going to go backwards. I'm going to start with the state of the minority address. We've been hearing it for two years, okay? You haven't raised taxes. Well, you can't explain to me then how do you afford a budget that went up $4 million if you haven't raised taxes. You have raised taxes by coming in the back door. We covered this before. And I told the mayor when he addressed it last year in his address to stop it. And that the malarkey that the minority leader exalts is malarkey. When he said at his address last month of the state of the whatever, again, that they were accused of cooking up the budget with no proof. You don't need proof when you have witnesses. And to confirm it, the Freemans said, addressed it only once they scratched the surface. The council found two and a half million dollars in surplus in the budget. That's the end of it. Well, my advice to the uh, reporters from the Freeman, they should just stay home, come in the next day, go to the clerk's office and get their uh, press release and then print it. Because they don't print what goes on here. Okay? They get filtered out somewhere along the line. And they get filtered out to say what you want them to say. Okay? because it's a corrupt administration, okay? I, I can't say for the Johnny come lately's here <laughs> that you, you were never exposed to, to the public speaking that was just going on here before, okay? Um, so, when he says there's no proof, there is proof, okay? There's witnesses to it. I witnessed them take the two and a half million dollars out of the budget, roll it over into the non-aligned fund balance, sit on it for two years, then facing an audit, had to buy it down because you had 19 million dollars in the fund balance. Okay? What did you do? A million dollars out to Amitai. I, I, I went through this already. Okay? They don't print it. Okay? They don't say nothing. They do not do the residents of Kingston any justice. There's a biased newspaper that's owned by this administration or this council <coughs> or whatever. So when he says there's no proof, it's a bunch of malarkey. There is proof. The proof is in the deeds and in the figures. You cannot hide the figures and what you did in the past. It's written in stone. And as far as the finance committee chairman, let's sign this budget because let's not even look at it. It's the best budget to come down the pike in years. There he is, right there. The same budget that they found two and a half million dollars in. That's one year. The next year they found another million bucks. Okay? I don't know how you do it. But you're getting away with a lot. Okay? So, I want you to stop saying, oh, we haven't raised your taxes. Because you can't pay for a budget that goes up four and a half million bucks 
without raising taxes. Okay? And it was, something was left out of the ethics law that was mentioned here tonight about appearance of impropriety. If it gives an appearance of impropriety, it is an impropriety. Pay attention to small words in the documents. It is an impropriety, which wasn't mentioned. If it gives an appearance, it is. As far as public access, <coughs> it's still alive and well. You take these meetings, what do you do? You put them on YouTube. You have the ability to bring them over to the commissioner running public access in the town of Esopus and broadcast them like the county broadcasts their legislature meetings on TV. Old people, a lot of people don't have computers. It was mentioned today. You, what, do you put it on YouTube? Is that, is that transparency? Is that your definition of transparency? YouTube? The reason why public access went belly up is because you didn't want to fund it. Public access was in debt for $6,000 to Ellen Bogan. Okay, he was confiscating the equipment. I didn't interrupt anybody speaking, and if he says something more, I will ask you to remove him. Okay? And John Catan was gracious enough to afford us a place to broadcast. And, you're st and, you have not, and the commission is a quasi-governmental agency of this city. And because you have not appointed any new commissioners to the board, I imagine that the old commissioners are still commissioners. They probably won't be tomorrow, but tonight they are. And it was programs like those things we wanted to filter and control, antagonizing the public, okay? Of course, you don't want to put the, the tape on uh, TV. That would be too transparent. That would show you what goes on here at public speaking, at the the attitude of the citizens of Kingston. Now, I can say a few more things, but there's not enough police here to control the crowd. Okay? He's smiling, because he knows it's true. Okay? He's smiling. And they got elected because of uninformed citizens, and I blame the Freeman, and I blame all of you for not being transparent. And I'll be around, and as far as the ethics board is concerned, you know my sentiment about that. They got no ethics. Okay? I hope they're here. I don't know if they're still here, but that's my attitude towards them. When I'm not allowed to prosecute my own charges, Okay, and put out of the room, and they address them on their own. You tell me if it's ethical for corporate counsel who's being brought up on charges to take an ethics board into a closed door meeting. Okay? Oh, I can represent both sides. There's another one. I can represent both sides. How can you represent both sides? We requested a, a stenographer, oh no, I'll be here to take notes. Then they kicked him out of the room. Now there was nobody there to take notes. This is gonna go on, okay? And, and we will oppose, and if I can find people to step forward, any election, uh, I hope to promote them. And if I can't promote them, I'll do it myself. But that Freeman shouldn't even be here tonight. 
Go to the clerk's office tomorrow, Ariella, and pick up your report. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Anybody else want to speak? All right, this closes our public speaking portion. We now enter into claims and communications. <clears throat> no discussion, they'll be on file in the clerk's office. Can I get a motion to dispense for the second reading of the general bills and pacing? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is adopted 9-0. We now enter into the report of committees, starting with resolution number 43. Resolution 43 of 2020, resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, recommending approval for adopting the City of Kingston's procurement policy for the year 2020. On the question? Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution adopted 9-0. Resolution 44? <laughs> resolution 44 of 2020, resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, authorizing a budgetary modification for facility improvements at the Roundout Neighborhood Center in the amount of $95,000 to replace the lower roof and individual HVAC units in the building. On the question? Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution adopted 9-0. Resolution 45? Resolution 45 of 2020. Resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, authorizing a budget modification in the amount of $23,436 to balance the Sewer Fund New York State Retirement System accounts. On the question? Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution adopted 9-0. Resolution 46? Resolution 46 of 2020. Resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, authorizing a 2019 budgetary transfer from the general fund in the amount of $120,663 to balance out medical, dental, and optical insurance. On the question? Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution is adopted 9-0. Resolution number 47? Resolution 47 of 2020, Resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, authorizing a 2019 budgetary transfer from the general fund in the amount of $1,012,997 to balance general fund New York State retirement accounts. On the question, Alderman Scott Childress. Uh, I would like to thank uh, our Comptroller, John Tuey, for the great work that he's been doing over the past uh, many years. It's because of his uh, leadership and knowledge and awareness of how uh, government works efficiently that he's been able to develop budgets that have allowed us to come in under budget for many years now. Through this process, we've been able to save money, put it into our fund balance, and then we are now being able to use that money to pay down uh, a debt that otherwise we'd be paying uh, um, interest on for a long time to come. By paying this down, we are saving the taxpayers of Kingston money, and I think this is a great testament to the work that John Tuey has done, so I thank him and I will vote in favor. Anyone else on the question? Hearing no more discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution is adopted 9-0. Resolution 48. Resolution 48 of 2020, resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, authorizing a change in the fee schedule to reduce the annual Kingston taxicab driver, driver license fee to $10 per year. On the question, Alderman Koop. Yes, thank you, Madam President. Um, uh, the purpose of this resolution is to make, the, uh, make our uh, city taxi drivers um, their expenses more more competitive with uh, Uber and Lyft. Uh, the finance committee was solidly behind this resolution, pending a discussion with uh, uh, the, the officer, Officer Jerry uh, Marion, who administers this within the Kingston Police Department, and he is solidly in favor of it and urges us to go forward with this. So I will be in favor of this resolution. I urge my colleagues to do likewise. Thank you. Anyone else? Hearing no more discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Resolution is adopted 9-0. Resolution 49. Resolution 49 of 2020. Resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, authorizing the Kingston Veterans Association to erect a monument on the front lawn of Kingston City Hall to honor those who serve on the, in the war on terrorism. On the question, Alderman Davis. Yes, Madam President. Uh, this came out of public safety, uh, the Kingston Vet Association, Veterans Association, and we'll be building a monument out front in City Hall at a location to be, to be determined, and they are going to be funding this and all fully support and that the veterans are going to pay for this, and this is a way for the City of Kingston to and, uh, show back gratitude to the Kingston Veterans Association that has done so much for the City of Kingston. And so I urge all my fellow, all the people to vote yes on this monument. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hearing no more discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution, ad reso resolution adopted 9-0. Resolution 50? Resolution 50 of 2020. An ordinance amending an ordinance in relation to the traffic on the public streets of the city of Kingston, New York, adding handicap parking on Hunter Street. On the question, <clears throat> hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution adopted 9-0. Resolution 51. Resolution 51 of 2020. An ordinance amending an ordinance in relation to the traffic on the public streets of the city of Kingston, New York, adding handicap parking on Shufelt Street. On the question, hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution adopted 9-0. Resolution 52. Resolution 52 of 2020. An ordinance amending an ordinance in relation to the traffic on the public streets of the city of Kingston, New York, removing handicap parking on Van Buren Street. On the question. Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted 9-0. Resolution 53. Resolution 53 of 2020. An ordinance amending an ordinance in relation to the traffic on the public streets of the city of Kingston, New York, removing handicap parking on Shufelt Street. On the question. Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution is adopted 9-0. Resolution 54. Resolution 54 of 2020. Resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, to adopt the City of Kingston Capital Asset Policy for financial reporting purposes. On the question. Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution is adopted 9-0. Resolution 55. Resolution 55 of 2020. An ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, amending Section 90.92, Schedule 9, section, Stop Intersection of the Kingston City Code on Gage Street and Fairley Street. On the question. Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution is adopted 9-0. Resolution 56. Resolution 56 of 2020. Resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, recommending the appointment of Virginia Davis to the Board of Assessment Review. On the question, Alderman Davis. Madam President, I would be recusing myself and since Virginia Davis is my spouse. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Scott Childress. Uh, I would like to thank Virginia Davis for stepping in to um, take the place of Bernie Matthews. Unfortunately, Bernie, uh, who's been an amazing public servant, uh, for many years has had to step off the Board of Assessment Review. This is a, 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 a duty that requires a fair amount of training uh, and so we're very happy that Virginia would step in and take this position. We realize that it may cause a little bit of uh, 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 friction here but uh, at the same time we will follow the right uh, practice uh, to ensure that all ethics rules are followed just as uh, Alderman Davis has just done to recuse himself on this vote. So uh, I don't see any problem with this and we're very uh, proud that she has taken this opportunity to help out the city when it's in need. Thank you. Alderman Davis? I'd like to say one other thing. Uh, 
we have a lot of openings on commission, so when people stand up and say that some people should be recused or so, uh, maybe they should step up to the plate and start signing up for some of these committees, that com these valuable committees and commissions that the city needs volunteers to step up for. So I'm taking this time, and people who want to get interested or involved in city government, there's opportunities for to serve on these committees that are valuable to the city of Kingston's government. Thank you. Anyone else? Hearing no more discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Yeah. Opposed. I have to oppose myself. So. Resolution is ado uh, adopted 7 1. Resolution 57. Resolution 57 of 2020, Resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, authorizing an increase in, the fun in funding in the first instance for the Federal Aid Project, PIN number 8762.02, Wilbur Avenue repaving in the amount of $1,400,000. On the question, Alderman Koop. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, this is a major change that was brought before the committee uh, by the engineering department. Uh, the original intent was to repave the entire length of Wilbur Avenue. And when engineering got into the details and did some uh, structural investigations, they found that a major part of Wilbur Avenue was, uh, needed a lot more work than was originally envisaged uh, due to borings and so on and so forth. It's not just a question of resurfacing Wilbur Avenue. There's a major part of Wilbur Avenue from West O'Reilly Street up to the DPW property that needs, uh, suffice us to say, substantially more work that could not be covered by the original uh, allocated monies. So the Finance Committee has agreed to limit the scope of uh, what was originally uh, almost a two-mile uh, uh, project to one that is only about 2,700 feet. A lot of money has to go in to do this. It's a major thoroughfare. It must be done. Uh, so we have approved, uh, we we're recommending approval of uh, additional monies to do this work. Now one might ask, well, how did we get into this? Why didn't, why didn't the engineering department know this uh, uh, at the beginning? And in fairness, I think at the say, if they had to do these types of tests on every street that we were looking at improving, uh, the cost would just be astronomical. So the, you know, they found out after they got into it, whoops, if you could say that, this isn't gonna work. We've got to reconsider this. So it's a major thoroughfare. It has to be done. Still to be understood is the remainder of Wilbur Avenue. Hopefully we can get grants to do that. But it would make no sense to go ahead with this project because the state would not just not approve it and reimburse. So I urge my fellow members to support this, bond res uh, this project and the incumbent resolution to follow, which is a bond resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Alderman Hirsch. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I will be voting yes on this bond, uh, even though the project no longer includes paving of Wilbur Avenue and Ward 9. Um, I am constantly hearing from residents of Wilbur that they believe they are a forgotten section of Kingston, so I hope that we remember the residents of Wilbur and get the last section of the avenue paved from West O'Reilly down to Beale Street as soon as we can. Thank you. Anyone else? Hearing no one else, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution is adopted 9-0. Resolution 58. Resolution 58 of 2020. Resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, authorizing the adoption of a bond ordinance for the additional sum of $276,000 for the Wilbur Avenue reconstruction project. On the question? Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution is adopted 9-0. Resolution 59, bonds, long roll, please. 
Resolution 59 of 2020, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of an additional bonds of the City of Kingston, Ulster County, New York, to pay part of the cost of the reconstruction of Wilbur Avenue in and for said city. Alderman Tollerman? Aye. Alderman Davis? Yes. Alderman O'Reilly? Yes. Alderman Shabbat? Yes. Alderman Hirsch? Yes. Alderman Ventura Morrell? Aye. Alderman Coop? Yes. Alderman Scott Childress? Aye. Alderman Worthington? Yes. Bond is adopted 9-0. This concludes our communications. Before we close the meeting, uh, does anyone have anything? Alderman Davis? Yes, Madam President, I would like to close this meeting in behalf of Frank Polacco Sr., who passed away on February 12, 2020. And he lived on O'Neill Street, which is in Ward 6. And Mr. Polacco and served in the U.S. Army in the Korean War, uh, life, life long, lifetime member of the veterans of VFW, and beloved mem member of the community, especially Ward 6. And as it says in his obituary, um, I remember many times Mr. Polacco being very kind, always having a funny or caring word or nickname for those he met. I mean, just knowing him and playing ball with his sons. You know, every time I ran into him, he, he had something funny to say. Uh, he leaves behind his three children, Dr. Darlene Westinghouse of Saugerties, Frank Polacco Jr., and Ron Polacco, and the former alderman of Ward 6 in, in the city of Kingston. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Chavit. Thank you. I'd like to close in memory. Actually, I have two. Uh, first is Mary Nacarado, recently passed. Um, Mrs. Nacarado was born in Glasgow, uh, but moved to Kingston, has an extremely long history of service to the city. Uh, she was involved in the garment industry, which is, was famous in Kingston, worked at Chambers School, Key Bank, uh, she leaves behind two sons and a great many children and uh, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Um, the other is Gatano Tom Turco. Um, he was born in Larchmont, came to Kingston at an early age, spent 25 years down a Hudson cement plant with my father, um, worked for Ulster County, worked for Millens, uh, leaves behind son and daughter and a, a very large family. Thank you. Alderman O'Reilly. Thank you. I'd like to end uh, in honor of, uh, in memory of June Lawkins from Lake Katrine. Uh, she had five children who uh, they, they uh, raised in the area. Uh, she has eight grandchildren. She's an avid animal lover. Uh, she's known for her warmth, her kindness, and her giving nature. And she could do a crossword puzzle and pen. <laughs> um, She's, I know her personally. She's a lovely lady, and uh, she will be missed. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to close in honor of um, Debbie Schneid, who passed away early this month, a Ward 9 resident. Uh, she taught at a art in Kingston City School District. Um, her obituary read that she saw the good in everyone in the world itself. She strives to be a part of a positive change in the world, and um, having worked with her for a couple of years as her alder woman, um, that's exactly the way I would describe her. So it's a very sad loss to the ward in the city. Anybody else? All right, we hear. We hereby stand adjourned until the next regularly scheduled meeting on April 7th, 2020.